Hey everybody, it's Jason Vlaha here. Now that my obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And I've been following this whole Kenobody Natty Verified thing, which I've had my own take on it. I gave you guys Omar Isoff's take on it. And I'm trying to follow everyone's reactions to it. And apparently Alpha Destiny, aka Alexander Leonidas, aka Strap on Destiny, aka the Dwarf Lord, has made a response to it also. So uh, let me go ahead and put on my plus five hat of speechcraft, lovingly called my plus five hat of autism by many of you, and let's talk about this. Now, I want to clear something up. It's always a little minor caveat. I say that, I'll make jokes for calling Grimley the dwarf with dwarf lord. People say, aren't you only an inch or two taller than him? I'm, I'm actually six inches taller than him. But, uh, you know, it doesn't make me a particularly tall person, and that's why it makes it funny, because he's admitted to being insecure about it. So it's all in fun, guys. People need to remember, it's all in good fun. Don't take this stuff so seriously, right? Don't take it so seriously. It's just YouTube, fellas. So, over to the point. Alex has given his own opinion on it. He brought up the whole Instagram thing, and I'll jump into that in a minute, because that's that's kind of its own topic. But what he said is that he would do it. He, he'd do it anytime. Anytime, okay, well, good. That means you'll be one of the first ones to enroll. Um... Not a problem there. You know, let's come up to people like, Jason, are you going to enroll? No. No, why would I? I don't claim natural. I don't claim natural. Um, and I always will probably go back on TRT at some point. Even though I came off TRT, I am a guy in my 40s who has had a problem with, with some testosterone issues and cortisol issues in the past due to a medical issue I have. So there's no guarantee I'm not going to go back on TRT. I may not announce it. But I might go back on TRT, which may trigger that test. So, uh, again, I, mean, I don't claim natural, though, and that's kind of the whole point. That's the point of the whole thing. It's trying to catch people who are claiming natural, lifetime natural, all that stuff. And to me, there's, there's no difference. I don't differentiate between natural and lifetime natural. They're the same thing. Look, if you've done some gear, you're not natty. And it is what it is, guys. I'm not even anti-gear. I'm really not. I'm only against people ripping other people off. That, that's the only reason I care at all right? That is the only reason any of us should care about fake natties, is number one, maybe giving people false standards and expectations, right? But you know what? If you're taking advice from a genetic freak who's natural, you're getting the same false expectations. Because someone who's a genetic freak doesn't have to train ideally. Someone who's a genetic freak doesn't have to do the things you're going to have to do to get results. And if they're in that top hundredth of a percent uh, genetically for aesthetics or strength or anything else, you can't compete with them. And their advice might not even be that good. What works for them probably isn't going to work for you. So kind of the point we come to uh, when it comes to that, getting advice from genetic freaks is not any better than getting advice from people who are blasting gear. Not really any better. It's probably not going to work for you if they haven't worked with other people who are genetically average and you're genetically average. Guess what? Their advice is just as garbage as the fake natties is. But uh, the point we get to, uh, he brought that up. That he's concerned also that a lot of people are going to be able to get around it. And, I mean, I agree with that. That's, that's the biggest problem with it is that unless it's a continual schedule going all the time, all right, unless it's a continual schedule going all the time, and these people are getting tested multiple times a year, everyone who's in this natty verified thing, um, and it may be a hassle to people. You know, you kind of got to wonder, is Greg just going to ship them stuff? Is he going to have people come to their house? Or are they going to have to go travel somewhere? Are they going to have to go to a clinic? Because, I mean, that, that's a big pain in the butt for a lot of people. Um, actually having to travel to do it all the time. You know, again, it becomes a hassle when you're just trying to make videos and make a living and stuff like that. Uh, depending upon what you're doing here and what, what you're doing with the platform. So, you got to wonder how, how big of a deal is he going to make it? And, and I'm supportive of the idea. I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, anytime we're dealing with some transparency, particularly when we're dealing with a very anecdote-based uh, situation like fitness that isn't always fully based upon the best data and science, and it's a lot of people's anecdotes are being sold, you know what? Some transparency is not a bad thing. Right? There's a reason I use calibrated plates for everything. Uh, there's a reason I actually document all of my workouts. It's just part of it. It's a, my form of transparency. Um, and I think we need a little bit more of that. But the, the interesting point that we come to is that um, when it comes to selling programs and things like that, 
the fake natty thing, as he said, is getting bigger on Instagram than YouTube because YouTube has done a pretty good job. And, and he didn't mention me, and that's really intentional on his part. He knows I'm one of the big people who pushed all of that on this, this platform. I'm one of the people who pushed that on this platform. Um, big time. And, and the other thing that we come to is that, yeah, on YouTube, people have figured it out more or less. And I think on YouTube, we've gotten to a situation to where you don't have to always be phenomenal. You don't have to be in fake natty category to actually make a really good living on YouTube anymore. You really don't. Um, I mean, you take me, for example. I'm a strong guy. I'm a very strong guy for being in my 40s. And that's, that's kind of a part of my selling point. A lot of people do catch on that and they realize that when they'll try to say, oh, I don't think you're that strong. Then they go look at their dad who lifts and they go, oh, never mind. You know, when their dad's like, are you crazy? So, the point we get to, you don't have to be the best at it, uh, and I actually make pretty good living off this. I'm not going to get into details, but people who say, oh, what is a pretty good living? Um, you know, probably more than you make. So, the money is actually pretty good on this platform. If you've learned to market yourself, you're getting a million views a month or more, you probably are more than able to, to live comfortably off of a, a platform like YouTube without doing the fake natty thing anymore. Uh, I mean, I feel like we've kind of gotten to that point to where the, the most impressive physiques that just want to show off and sell programs rather than actually get in front of a camera and talk and do their thing and have personalities and outreach or entertainment or whatever, because there's a lot of blogging, a lot of entertainment, a lot of commentary, a lot of news. Um, there is a lot of different stuff that happens on this platform now that doesn't necessarily require you to look uh, like a fitness model all the time with your shirt off, right? So this platform has changed quite a bit, and Instagram uh, is becoming the bigger platform for fake natties. And he does have a point there. He's absolutely got a point there. Uh, because Instagram doesn't catch on that as much because it's a little more visual. It's less of people actually talking and, and giving you free information uh, like we do on this platform. It is a lot of product selling. Because Instagram is not a monetized platform, it's one of those where people all want to go watch, but most of the money you're making there is by selling products, it's by affiliate sales, um, selling your programs, your meal plans, stuff like that. It's still a direct sale that you're doing there versus here, it's just the ads alone, once you get a lot of traffic, um, you can make a fortune off YouTube, right? Let's kind of go back to that point. If you're getting a million views a month on YouTube, you don't need a normal 9 to 5 job. You don't. You really and truly don't at that point. Um, so something like Instagram though, it's still kind of a sales thing. And so you've got the flash of the fake natties and you do see that you do see the fake natties there who are marketing stuff and selling products and their people are less hip to it because they, they're not listening to all the commentary and discussion that we've had for years in the YouTube fitness world talking about fake natties. That's a different audience. Um, and it is totally more visual based. Uh, because people aren't always talking and making long videos and discussing stuff and, and everything else. It's, it's very visual. Um, and so the fake physiques tend to do really well there for pushing products and then selling things. Hey, this supplement's what I use. Here's my meal plans. Here's this and that. You can buy these templates and just order stuff through there and get links to their websites. So there is a lot more of that, and it is a bigger breeding ground now for the fake natties. And that's a valid point, something I hadn't thought of. Um, and I'll give credit where credit is due. Alex got that right. Uh, I do see what he's saying when I go and do take a peek at Instagram. I'm not really an Instagrammer. I don't currently have an Instagram. Uh, I'm not extremely familiar with the platform. But it's probably something I should get into later eventually, and I probably will. It's not currently on my to-do list. Uh, but but that is a bigger platform for it. So you also have to wonder, you know, is he going to do the same thing there? Does he want to extend something like that over to Instagram, which may be a good idea. But I guess it depends on, on how much currently Greg really cares about Instagram versus YouTube. I don't know much how much he diversifies all of his stuff. I know he uses both platforms. So he might be interested in doing that too. And it's something uh, that might be worth looking into, right? Might be worth looking into. Uh, because at this point in the game, Instagram is a much bigger and easier platform for the fake natties because they don't necessarily have to be able to get in front of a camera. They don't have to get in front of a camera and talk. They don't have to build an audience through communication here. It's more of a visual medium. And so they could be someone who doesn't have the, again, the ability to talk in front of people, get in front of a camera, do that. They might be really shy about that, but they could show off and flex a little bit our chicken shake her butt a little bit, and then she can be like, bam, buy my meal plan, ho. You know, so you you have that there. 
uh, it's, it's a different platform and it's a different sort of person to do that. And I think it probably is an easier platform now for the fake natties between number one, the audience being more visual based, less educated on it than they are maybe in YouTube fitness these days. Um, the fact that, again, it's an easier platform for people who only maybe have the physique from, from genetics and, and copious drug abuse, uh, who don't necessarily have a speaking ability or communication abilities at all. Uh, so it's, it's a different platform, and it's, it's probably at this point easier for them uh, to utilize that for it. So that's a good point that maybe he should hop over and do it with that too. But at the end of the day, what you do have to remember there are probably going to be ways around the testing. There's always ways around testing, always has been, always will be. And that is the simple reality of it. But it, maybe it's a step in the right direction. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.